Hello sunshines, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Today we're gonna be doing a little self-care routine to maintain things that we don't have to maintain on a daily basis, but we have to maintain once in a while so it doesn't get out of hand, you know what I mean? Like hair masking, face masking, skin polishing, dry brushing, teeth whitening, eyebrow maintenance, facial hair removal, skin care, and a bunch of other good stuff. Let's go. start with hair masking. This is a specific hair mask that's supposed to help strengthen and recover and grow my hair back after going through the postpartum issues. It's supposed to bring my hair back to life with great natural and organic ingredients by a brand called Vita and this specific hair mask goes into my hair hours before shampooing. So it will go into my hair now while my hair is dry and then wash my hair later with shampoo and condition and detangle like normal. You don't have to use exactly what I'm using. There are other masks that I recommend. These two masks are by a brand called Together Beauty. This is the C plus G mask. It's a smoothing mask to treat, nourish, and smooth your hair. And then there's the Dreamer Overnight Repair Mask, which is to strengthen and hydrate. Both of them are really good. I just use them in different ways. No synthetics, blah, blah, blah. It's very good. Another mask I love is this Aveda Botanical Repair Intensive Strengthening mask. I'm also loving the Sky Organics treatment mask which you guys have seen me post recently here in one of my latest curly hair routines. But these days I'm focusing on the Vita mask because I want to give this mask the opportunity to do its thing and see if it really can work. I literally just take the mask and start applying it in my hair. I focus most of it on my scalp area so it can go into my follicles and do its thing, grow my hair back. Biggest problem area with growing my hair and bringing my hair back to the length it used to be years ago is the back part of my head. My hair grows everywhere else but grows very, very, very slowly in the back and it's so annoying. So I put a lot of this back there. this up boom let that marinate I'm gonna wash my hands now for some face assessments we're gonna be looking at this skin close up nobody likes looking into one of these but sometimes it's very satisfying to see things super close up and get in there to the areas that only you see close up but do make a big difference from far away as well so I'm not gonna do anything complicated today all of this is very simple and what I truly do in my maintenance routine so I'm gonna work on my eyebrows we're gonna trim and pluck and I've been doing my brows myself for like the past 10 years now. I'm not one of those people that has super bushy eyebrows or hair growing all over the place where it requires too much maintenance. I'm just basically going to clean this up. First thing I'm gonna do is take this alcohol pad and clean my tools. This has alcohol already soaked into it. And I also have this pimple extracting tool that's also for blackheads. I'm gonna be wiping this down with alcohol as well. You can soak this in alcohol, but right now what I have is alcohol wipes. Just make sure your tools are clean and that you're disinfecting them at least. Even if it's just you using them, you gotta clean them. All right, I like to start off by brushing my eyebrows up. And I never pluck anything on top because as you can see, it's not necessary for me. I just keep that natural shape on top. It's just how my brows are. My hair used to grow all down here and it no longer does because I've been waxing for so long. I've been waxing my brows since I was like 13 or 14 years old, but I haven't waxed my eyebrows in over 10 years and it's still like that. That hair will just not grow back. So I'm not changing my shape over here. I'm just gonna pluck the stray. So I'm not touching anything over here. If you're someone who is afraid of over plucking, you can take any eyeliner and make a line where you don't want to pluck your hair so that you know to not pass that line. So any hair on this line will not get trimmed. This isn't something that I do, but it's just a tip for you. And when I pluck, I pluck away. So I'm pulling it out in the direction that it's growing, not against it. Now brushing these hairs up again. With my scissors, I'm gonna trim these hairs over here, but I don't like really trimming these in the front because I kinda like these looking a little longer. 
Brushing that away, and boom, one brow done. See the difference? All right, now doing the same exact thing to this one, I'm just brushing it up and plucking these little stray hairs, but not plucking close to this line because I know that's where I like to fill in. But again, you can use a white eyeliner to guide yourself on where not to pluck. Brushing it up again, and I'm just gonna trim those long hairs again. In between my brows, I don't really grow much hair. I have like two or three hairs sometimes I grow in there. But you guys, I'm not kidding. I used to have a unibrow. That looks good. Now facial hair removal. The only place I really need to remove hair on my face is my upper lip fuzz. I'm not one of those people that shave like the rest of their face. I know some girls are into like grazing their peach fuzz all over their face. I don't like that and I don't feel like it's necessary. A lot of people claim that your makeup goes on smoother, your face looks more smooth, but I actually think the opposite. For me, they're very light blonde hairs. A lot of Hollywood stars from like back in the day, like Marilyn Monroe, they actually loved having peach fuzz because it created a more soft appearance to their skin. Uh, when they were on camera, powder sits on the skin better. That hair on our skin will create like some type of cushiony softening that it does to the camera. I don't know. I believe it. I only remove the top lip part. You can use wax like this one. This is from Moom Organic Hair Removal. Very simple, very easy. There's also this one from the brand Parissa. But to show you something simple and easy that I do from time to time, especially when I'm traveling or I know I'm just not going to have a lot of time, is using one of these flawless skin shavers. It has like this circle thing and there's like little blades in there. You graze it over your skin and it'll remove the top layer of your hair. And I've had this for years. I use it a lot and I've been waxing my upper lip less because I have something like this. So although I have to use this more often than waxing, it's still something very quick and simple that you can do any day. And it literally takes seconds to do and I'm gonna show you that right now. Turn it on like that. And I just go in circular motions. Very smooth and nothing removed over here. Before I continue, I'm gonna take a little cotton pad and some astringent tea tree willow bark clarifying stringent from 100% pure. Give it a little cleanse before I assess my skin even more. And this will just prevent, if I'm extracting something from my skin, I don't want to put anything back inside the skin that may be bad for the skin and cause flare ups or anything like that or acne. I will be cleansing my skin fully when I go in the shower. At this point, I'm going to extract tiny pimples like this one and that one and that one. They're not very bad but I'm just gonna do it to show you how I would do it if they were bigger. I'm gonna start off with this one right here. And I can literally see it in this little tool. Cleaning it out and then continuing. Right here, I have one of those ingrown pimples. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see, but I'm going to take these two little napkins and extract it that way with my fingers because I'll have more control. Can you see that? It came out. Just cleaning that up. My skin is pretty red right now, but no worries. I'm gonna go in the shower and do some other stuff and it's gonna calm the skin. But what I'm gonna do now is teeth whiten the natural way. So I'm going to be using a strip for the top and bottom of my teeth. And while that is on my teeth, I'm going to be dry brushing my skin before I wipe my teeth. I'm gonna be using this natural tooth powder. This is like a polish stain removing powder that you put on your toothbrush and you brush all of your teeth with it. So although I brushed my teeth this morning with regular toothpaste, I'm gonna to use this tooth powder for extra polishing and brightening for my teeth and then put on these strips. So I just dip my brush in there. All 
already rinsed my mouth and now we're gonna whiten i know i'm gonna sound funny right now when i speak but the reason i use this one is because it's a non-toxic company and it whitens the teeth over time without causing sensitivity like now i'm going to demonstrate a little bit of dry brushing although obviously you do this fully naked because we have the camera here i'm just gonna demonstrate a little bit so you start at your feet and move your way up getting every part of your legs and dry brushing is awesome for like cellulite, lymphatic drainage. It makes your skin look and feel softer because you're exfoliating all the dead skin and then washing it out in the shower. And we're gonna moisturize after showering as well. You brush your belly and you brush your arms going all the way up towards your heart. You get it, right? To shower, I've been loving this African black soap with eucalyptus and tea tree by the brand Alafia. And whether I dry brush or not, on a daily basis I use these exfoliating gloves by Eco Tools to cleanse and exfoliate my entire body. And African black soap is perfect for skin types like mine that can often get clogged pores very easily. I especially need extra exfoliation on my legs. I feel like it helps before and after shaving to prevent bumps and ingrown hairs. I like giving the bottom of my feet a good scrub at least once a week. So in the shower, I keep this Equal Tools foot scrubber because it's very simple and it helps keep my feet smooth. To cleanse my face, I'm using a simple daily wash. This one is by a brand called Folk and it has great ingredients that I love, especially after having a sweaty workout, just as a preventative so I don't get breakouts. Now on my hair, I'm continuing to use the Vita shampoo and conditioner, which I purchased with a five-piece pack. And it has a simple, nice, earthy scent that I really like. Literally smells like you can eat it. But what I love most is that the ingredients are so simple, so understandable, and so organic. These ingredients are supposed to help grow and recover my hair back. So still using it. Let's see how it goes. So I'm applying the conditioner, but I'm not going to detangle just yet. I'm leaving it in just for a little bit until I'm done exfoliating my face, which I'm going to do right now with my favorite, favorite scrub. This is the Acure Brightening Facial Scrub. It's made with sea kelp and green clay, which is what gives it its intense green color that it has. I've been using this scrub for years and there's nothing that compares to this one. So I use this all over my face. Be careful with the eyes. Do not scrub under your eyes. It's not meant for that area. It's just meant for rougher areas of your face. And I like to focus on certain areas that often get forgotten, like the hairline area where we all tend to have more visible texture and the sides of my nose as well. And as always, my skin looks and feels so much softer and so much smoother after using the scrub. And finally, the last step in the shower is to detangle my hair and rinse out that conditioner that I just left in for a little while. This is my skin straight out of the shower. Because I did all of that exfoliating and picking at my face, I'm gonna use something very gentle to calm my skin and rehydrate my skin. So these are two masks that I would recommend after doing something like this, like exfoliating. These are both very gentle. This is the Honest Beauty Prime and Perfect Mask. This has super fruits and shea butter, so it's very hydrating. I've used this before makeup and my skin looks amazing. And then there's this Squalane and Vitamin C Rose Mask by Biosense. And this has 10% pure vitamin C, which I also love. I love having vitamin C on my skin, especially daytime. Again, both very gentle. I can go with either one. Today I'm going to go with the Scalene because it has vitamin C and I plan on using vitamin C after this as well. I'm going to apply this vitamin C mask and leave it on until I'm done doing other things like moisturizing the rest of my body. So while this is on, we'll be doing other things. Now it's time to focus on the skin on my body, which is also very important because I have dry skin. But before we moisturize, I'm going to apply my deodorant. My favorite deodorant right now is the Skylar deodorant. I keep buying them. There's no aluminum and no baking soda in this and it works amazingly, amazingly well. I love it. 
Another deodorant I love is the Beauty Counter Clean Deal. This one has a very light coconut scent. Very simple, it feels good and it works. This one has a more feminine scent that I love, which is why I go for this one more often because I just love the way it smells. And I feel like on days when I'm working out, wearing something like this that has a scent helps with when you sweat and have a little bit of BO. My husband even has his own and loves it. So that's what I use. If you haven't read my deodorant post on my blog, I have an article all about how natural deodorants work and the difference between an antiperspirant and a deodorant. Okay, my new obsession, shea butter. Raw, unrefined, straight from Ghana, Africa. This is a company I found on Instagram called Hamamat. And the owner of the company is this girl that I follow that's just drop dead gorgeous. Every single photo of her is just insanely beautiful. Her skin is amazing. She has shea butter all over her body and it's just so inspiring. Shea butter is so good for so many different things. And I wanted it from an organic, real source. Acne, scarring, stretch marks, eczema, psoriasis, crusty feet, very dry skin bumps on your body, all of the above. It's good for everything and I swear by it. So I purchased the Safari Shea Butter, which is a strong yellow color, and then the original plain golden Shea Butter. On Instagram, people keep asking me the difference. The difference is this one is raw Shea Butter blended with tea tree oil and indigenous African herbs, which is what gives it its color. And this one is raw shea butter, unrefined, nothing added. Both have the same benefits, except this one has tea tree. So I like using this one with a tea tree on certain parts of my body, like my butt and my legs. And then I like using this one on my kids because I don't want them to stain anything, but while using this one, this one can stain a little bit if you're not careful and you're not careful with where you're using it on your body and like where you're sitting right after using it. But this one won't stain forever. I mean, once it settles into your body and your body absorbs it, it's not gonna continue staining anything. So first I take the regular golden shea butter and yes, it smells like shea butter. People ask, does it smell nutty? Does it smell like shea butter? Uh, yes, if it's raw, unrefined shea butter. What else is it supposed to smell like? And honestly, the smell does not bother me. It smells nutty like it's supposed to, it's natural. And it only smells that way when you first apply it as you go about your day. It's not that serious, it's not that strong. It looks like this and it melts instantly in my hands. I like to uh, apply it, especially in this back part of my arms because I actually have little bumps back here that I found out is called keratosis pilaris. And I have these especially on the back of my arms. So I like to focus the shea butter there because ever since I've been doing that, the bumps have gone away and I've had them for years. So I have a little bit of scarring. There's like specks that you can see there, but the smoothness of my skin is so much better. And of course I apply the shea butter on my elbows and on the rest of my arm, not just in that area. I literally apply it all over. As women age, we, age on our necks and our chest. I'm trying to keep myself moisturized and hydrated every day. But don't get me wrong, aging is a natural process of life. I am not fearful of aging. Getting lines and wrinkles on my face and looking older is a natural part of life and I will embrace that. It is actually a privilege to age and a lot of people forget to think about that. I just wanna age gracefully. On my booty and my thighs, I'm gonna be applying the Safari Shea Butter because it has tea tree and I think it works really well in those areas. That's what it looks like. And it's just like the other butter, just with tea tree and herbs. And I will say though, this one has a very pleasant smell. It smells more minty. It smells a little less nutty if that's important to you. Now it's time to rinse this mask off. Now to proceed with the skin, I'm gonna take my Beauty Counter Vitamin C Serum. It has vitamin C and turmeric, which is awesome for scarring and evening the skin tone and just brightening your skin as well. So I take two pumps and a half and apply it all over my skin and my neck. Something else I like to do on self-care and maintenance days like this is use a face roller or a gua sha. Just take time to give my skin and my face some love. Always moving upward. And you should never do this on dry skin, which is why I applied the serum first. This is definitely something you take your time to do. Just enjoy it. Now 
Now for eye cream, I recently just got this brightening dark circle eye cream from Ren Skincare. I've never used it before, so I'm just taking this opportunity to use it today, see how it goes. I'm not someone who has dark circles. I can get them sometimes if I'm consistently not sleeping and not doing the normal things that I would do for my health. So I can see them appear sometimes. And I'm a firm believer that you can't get rid of dark circles with an eye cream. I believe that eye creams can help moisturize your skin, help the skin texture in that area because it is very thin and fragile. It can help the skin appearance, but I don't think that eye cream can go deep inside to address the issues that may be causing the dark circles in the first place. I wouldn't put all my faith into an eye cream when it comes to dark circles. So I'm just using this for the first time right now. I applied way too much on my hand, but that's all right. Just to see if I like it, I don't know yet. Um, so we'll see. I applied way too much, but we're gonna put it in other areas like fine lines and things like that because eye cream is not only for your eyes. You can put it on your forehead, on your smile lines if you're in your mid-20s or early 30s like me. And lastly, for moisturizer, I have two options here that I would use on a day like today. This is the Beauty Counter Counter Time Supreme Cream. And then there's the Sway Lane Probiotic Gel Moisturizer by Biosense. The Beauty Counter Cream is thicker and rich, very hydrating. And the Biosense Gel Moisturizer is very light and airy and serum-like. I feel like going with this one today. I think it'll be very soothing to my skin right now. That is basically the whole video, you guys. I know I did not mention shaving, waxing, or body hair removal in this video. I think those are very specific topics that require a separate video, so that's why I didn't mention it. And we're done. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, sunshines.